Let's Hello, my name is Dan O. And we're out here um, doing some filming, so um, we can have some answers for posterity. I uh, have some severe breathing issues, and um, I'd like to respond to questions while I still can. So, well, I, I really love my daughter, and I go and I see her um, almost every weekend. I like to spend a couple of days with her and her boys and her husband. And uh, it's it's like the only two places I go are Great Vow Zen Monastery and my daughter's home in Tigard. I, I don't uh, feel inclined to do much other than to be around uh, my daughter and her family and of course my family here at the monastery. Those are the only places I really, really feel like being now. I don't have any I would like to see my daughter be successful in her, in her career. She's got two beautiful boys and a very nice husband. And so I think she's really uh, already attained um, a lot of the, the things that have meaning. My grandkids, I have, um, I have some fears for my grandson considering the kind of, considering the kind of world they're coming into and uh, I'm a little excited about the kind of change they'll see in their life because I can recall the change that I've seen in my life from um, going over to my aunt and uncle's house and watch TV for the first time when TVs first came out and uh, watching TV programs in, in their house. Um, we didn't even have a TV. We didn't have a TV for six or seven years, I think, after that. And um, so the change from the things that I've seen in my life, like we used to put coal in the furnace to heat the house. And uh, my grandsons don't even know what coal is. Or if they saw it, they wouldn't know what it was. And the kind of technological changes that they're going to be coming their way in the next 50, 60 years, I just can't even imagine how much technology will change. And that's kind of exciting. But how that will impact my grandsons is something else. Um, so I worry about their future a little bit, but they'll be just fine. What can I say? They got a good mom, they got a good dad. They're both pretty smart. One's very athletic. The one, the other one's very verbal. They, they've got, they've got talents that we haven't discovered yet. You know, I'm sure they'll be fine. But here I'm studying the Dharma, and I have the ability to get up and go into that zendo and sit there for. A, couple of hours of zazen every morning. It really seems to be the way to start the day. <coughs> it's getting more and more difficult to sit through sashin and sit through those that last sitting in the evening, but I really like to go to really like to go to Zazen in the morning and sit there quietly in the dark and watch the residents come in one or two at a time and sometimes when it's dark and you really can't see very well, I can still tell who it is just by the way they walk, by their gait, and tell how some of them are. And uh, that's kind of the high point of my day. 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. My favorite time. I have anxiety when I have, when I find myself in situations where my breathing is very stressed. 
And that can occur by moving too fast, which is usually what it is. I, I'm so impatient and I don't want to look like some old doddering old fool that I have a tendency to move faster than my lungs will keep up with my the muscle requirements. So occasionally I find myself where I've I've gone too fast and I'm now out of breath and I have basically a panic attack. I have panic attacks when I can't breathe. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and so when I have these <clears throat> when you have these panic attacks, though, it's, it's always associated with not being able to breathe. And so when I, when I have the panic and attack and I can't breathe, then along with that comes anxiety, the anxiety of, will I get another breath? Will I get another breath? Will I be able to get more air? And so the anxiety can make the breathing worse. It makes you constricted and so it slows down the breathing. And my practice of loving kindness has enabled me to, once I recognize that I have anxiety, I start doing loving kindness meditation for myself. May I be free from all fear and anxiety. May I be at ease. May I be happy. And when I start doing that, usually within less than a minute, I can feel that the anxiety is starting to dissipate. And the more it dissipates, the faster it dissipates. And I know that once I can see the anxiety going away, that the breathing is not far behind it. So once I start to loving-kindness meditation and I notice that the anxiety is just starting to dissipate I know I'm going to be okay and then the breathing come back quicker that's when I usually do loving-kindness meditation for myself and I also do loving-kindness meditation for my family and all the people that I love, including the abbots and the residents of the monastery and close acquaintances, but mainly for myself and for my loved ones and close friends. It's a nice practice. <laughs> it's a nice practice. <laughs> My Dharma name is Seiyu, S-E-I-Y-U. It, it means quiet hero. And uh, Chosen selected that name for me because she thought I was pretty heroic in the fact that I sold my house in Portland and bought one down here before they even knew that they were going to be able to make it here. <laughs> so. I didn't know that. <laughs> I found that out later. <laughs> but um, my name is Daniel. And that means God is my judge. So I've had this thought for many, many years that, well, God is my judge. He's going to judge me. I, I'll judge everybody else and I'll report to God. So. <laughs> but I've given that up. <laughs> I'm sorry? Utterly charming. Oh, think so? Yeah. He's not dorky or stupid? No. No, oh, good. I mean, the first half. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you can do some serious editing on that, I assume. Ask you, Dano, what, what advice do you give people about? What advice I give people? 
at the monastery at the breakfast table, what advice do you give people? Oh, well, God has shown, you know, uh, go heavy on the yogurt and the fruit. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, have the yogurt and fruit. Try, try to make the very best of every moment that you can. There's no other moment than this one right now. And this one's going to create the next one. And the next one will be created by this one. And on and on and on. And change will take place. What was that last one? If you give and give and give, eventually you're going to get into a spot where you're not afraid of being poor. Yeah. Or being broke. And it's just like giving away stuff. And it has to be, I mean, it could be small stuff in the, in the beginning. So what advice do you have people about getting old and getting sick and dying? Well, you might as well enjoy your ride. It's coming here. You may as well enjoy your yeah. life. It's coming. Enjoy your life as much as you can. You know, uh, enjoy your life as much as you can. Enjoy your life as much as you can. Pursue your own dreams. Yeah. And don't, and don't take those dreams for granted. Say something if all your fans. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter where you are. It's just more stuff coming your way. It's going to be that way until you feel like me or worse. Or you're dead. So what do you do with it? What? What do you do with it? Stuff coming your way. Let it go by. Let it go by. Let it go by. Um, I've got no problems. You sure? No problem. I have no problem. I have some difficulties, but no problem. And um, uh, life's still good, though it's a little more difficult and complicated than it was a couple of weeks ago. But I'm sure I'll be getting back to that before too long. So, what I can do is just keep on doing what I'm doing.